Hello and welcome, I'm Machine Dana. I hope you're doing really, really well. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up Alertbox version 1 on your Streamlabs OBS software. For those of you that don't know what Alertbox actually is, uh, Alertbox is where you see when somebody follows or give bits or donates or whatever on someone's stream, it's where the um, GIF appears and some writing appears on screen at a, per a certain point. Um, you can resize the alert box, you can configure the text size, uh, the duration, the sound levels, all kinds of different stuff. But it's essentially an overlay of a notification uh, with information about what's happened. But it's highly customizable. And in this video, I'll show you exactly how you can set it up, how you can add it to your Streamlabs OBS. Uh, and also, of course, how you can customize it to its fullest. We will briefly touch on uh, custom themes for it as well, but I'll do a more detailed video about custom themes. Most custom themes now tend to come with also some custom alert box themes as well. I've been using alert box pretty much since the very start of streaming. I would regard this as one of the most important aspects of things that you should be setting up on your stream. You probably should be setting this up really in the first week or maybe even before you go live, but certainly within the first week or so. I remember for the first few days of streaming, I actually didn't have this set up. I got a new follower and the alert did not appear. And the guy actually said in my chat, I can't believe that that didn't appear. And I felt really bad that he didn't get the kind of kudos that uh, most people get when, when they follow. I think viewers have come to expect this, so it's a good thing to add to your stream. It's not specific to Streamlabs OBS. It's also not specific to Twitch or YouTube. You can have it on Twitch, YouTube, Facebook Gaming. You can also have it on XSplit, on OBS, on Stream Elements, on a number of others. It's essentially a widget uh, or a browser source. I do loads of videos with Streamlabs and Streamlabs OBS, Stream Decks, loads of things to do with streaming in general uh, and guidance and help. So if you do find this video very useful, I'd appreciate a thumbs up because it definitely improves the visibility of the video. I would also appreciate if you want to subscribe as well, feel free to do so. If you've got any questions whatsoever and you want to jump on my stream, feel free to jump on at twitch.tv forward slash machine Dana. Okay, let's get into it. If you navigate to streamlabs.com, once you've done that, you can log in using your Twitch credentials or your YouTube credentials. Essentially, you've got a load of different options that you can use with Streamlabs on online. Loads of different functions are free and there's also some extra paid functions for Prime. If you do decide to upgrade to Prime, check the link in the description below and you'll get a money off that you will get by using my affiliate code. So Alertbox is one of the free functions, so you do not need to upgrade to use Alertbox. So once you've navigated and logged in, you can simply select on Alertbox. Now there are two versions of Alertbox. I'm going to be going through version one in this video and I'll have a separate video for version two. Alertbox version one is their established version and version two is currently in beta. Make sure that it is uh, either toggled to version one or two, depending on what you want. There is a tutorial button here, which will be very similar to the tutorial I'm giving you. The problem with the Streamlabs tutorial videos is they don't go into a lot of depth. They really give you kind of the skin deep information, the absolute minimum information to get it going. And that's the reason why I've done lots of different tutorials around Streamlabs. Streamlabs Online integrates very well with Streamlabs OBS. We'll forget about uh, these custom themes for the time being, but essentially with with these custom themes, you can import the custom CSS or customized alert box themes and alerts. Now, when you get into this, you're greeted with all the settings. There's a lot of settings and it can be quite overwhelming, but we'll break them down and go into them one by one. First of all, you've got the option here at the very top to choose which events you want the alert box to apply to. So for instance, if you want follows to work, but subscriptions, you don't want there to be an alert on screen, then you simply make that tick there. And as you do that, this URL will change. So we'll not copy the URL for the widget it the browser source just yet a key one here if you don't have merch there's no point in having it on um cloud bot redemptions and redemptions these can get quite annoying most of the others you're probably going to have we've got the opportunity here to test all of the different things here which we'll get into a little bit later general settings the background query you can basically ignore this for now this is a background call for preview purposes only the alert delay this is a whatever the delay will be on your alert so when somebody subscribes for example do you want to wait two seconds or would you prefer to wait 30 seconds before the alert goes off let me get into some moderation tools here so unlimited alert moderation delay is essentially like a censorship review. And all this means when you enable it, you have to enable the alerts um, to be approved manually. This is going to be really important if you allow messages, custom text message. You may want to just have mods that are approving. If moderators approve an event, it is uncensored for the streamer. 
So all that does is it means that there's a censorship for the viewers, but not for the streamer. You can add an alert moderation delay. So this is just a de delay for the actual moderator of up to 600 seconds, which is an insane amount, really. Now we get into the actual layout itself. And all this is, is you, you get a picture and some text, or if you just want text over the top of the picture, or if you want the text to the right of the picture, it's just, again, just personal preference. Resetting the stream labels session automatically. Bear in mind, these are global settings. I think all this does is refresh the settings, almost like a caching facility, so that if there are new alerts to come through, it will allow them to come through or not. It, it, by default, it's on disabled. I would probably leave it as disabled. Alert parries, all this does is allow your alerts to interrupt each other. So if you disable it, you'll have one alert complete itself. If you enable it, what will happen is the a new alert that comes along will interrupt a an alert in front of it. If you're a really big streamer and with massive high volume, you might want to enable that. But for most people, I think disabling that will be the right move. You can have some profanity words filters here, replacing bad words with happy words, hiding messages with bad words so you can hide them all together, or disable alerts containing the bad words. There is a standard bad word list, so you can enable that standard bad word list, which which you can add to and moderate yourself and anonymize names containing bad words so anything that contains bad words it will anonymize but again kind of defeats the object of having the alert box if you're anonymizing the person that's done it in which case you'd be better off just hanging up having a profanity filter that disables the alert containing bad words to be honest quick save settings once you've made your changes and now all we do is we're going to go into every single setting so for now i'll just go through the settings in follows but depend for each of these different events you can specifically customize virtually everything and it's really Really, really good that they offer that level of flexibility completely for free first of all you've got the option to enable or disable it here but that's kind of controlled here anyway and again you've got the option to do the layout of the alert so we've already done it at global level now we'll do it at specific follower level it may be the case that for follows you want it the picture above um, and the text below rather than overlaying and so on we've got some alert animations Different alert animations allow different things, so fading in and down, and it's just purely the animation of how the alert itself appears. I'm not going to go through every single one of these, but they all do different things like bouncing onto the screen or sliding onto the screen or flipping onto the screen. Fading in is pretty cool, to be honest, and then you've also got an option for it to fade in or out. You can now have a message t template, and again, this is specific for follows, but you want to be careful here because there's a trade-off between not having too much text. So I'm going to remove that, but it just shows that it can be customized. You can then separately define the text animation if you want. You can select an image. So here's the fun part. You can actually select an image that can appear when uh, somebody actually, in this case, follows. So you can choose to upload by clicking this button here from the uploads here, drag and drop to upload. But there are a number of stock images and GIFs available already. So you might just want to choose these for the time being. And then at a later stage, when you get a bit more time, to customize these with your own GIF images. So you can literally select something, for instance, whatever. The option here for the link, if it's a hosted image, you can select a hosted image and it will drag that hosted image from online. But it's normally best to upload an image so that it's hosted onto Streamlabs and their content servers. You do the same thing with an audio file. If there's an existing audio file, you can link it or you can select one. And again, there are a number of existing ones available already. We can browse through a number of different sounds that are available, or you can literally upload your own sound. Here's where you can choose the volume of that sound. Bear in mind, this is just the base volume here. You do also get option to control that within Streamlabs OBS. You can here choose the duration of the alert, and then an alert delay um, specifically for the follows. Again, we've already gone through the, gen the general global settings. What we can do here is enable or disable custom CSS. Now, if you have integrated and set up alert box themes, what happens as part of that setup is it will enable the custom CSS and it will drop in the code for that. By default, this is set to disabled. Now I've got custom themed CSS alert boxes and I'll do a separate video on that if you're interested in how to do that. So for me, the images and the text sizes and the padding and all the other stuff is pulled in from an overarching theme, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and then custom fields. If you're not planning on using custom themes, just leave this as disabled. We can specifically go into more detail about fonts, the color of the font, the weight, the size, and the font itself. And also you may want to add variations on the default settings as well so for instance if you want three or four different follows alerts you can do that by adding variations in here and it will pull in different settings and it'll mean that it'll randomize the selection of the alert that comes up you can literally customize all of these one by one to your liking at this point once you've done all of that you can hit save settings here and then all we, we would want to do there is copy the link you get a confirmation that it's copied to clipboard here and now we jump over to streamlabs obs to add this as a browser source onto your stream 
So once you're in Streamlabs OBS here, you want to find and locate the scene that you want to add the source to. Let's say if I want to add it to this one here as opposed to this one. By the way, I've also done a separate video on how to do transitions like this on the video. Then within sources, you want to click add new. We want to add a browser source. Click add source. Toggle to add new source instead. We can give it a name. Add the source. At this point, what will happen is you'll see that the source has appeared here with a placeholder image. We want to paste in the browser source URL. You can choose whether these, these are all standard settings when you add any browser source, not just alert box. Uh, whether it's stored on a local file, you can set the width and the height, although you can resize this anyway, so that's irrelevant. Using custom frame rates if you want, controlling audio, audio via OBS, custom CSS, shut down source when not visible. I just tend to leave these as default, but you may have a pre preference there. Once we've done that, we can click OK, and that now is our alert box. If we want to also here, within the sources, we can right click this, and copy the actual source and paste it into different scenes. We can resize this to be any size we want. Let's, let's just make it super, super huge and put it in the middle of the screen. So bear in mind the actual browser source covers this section of the scene, even though you can see my Streamlabs OBS, which I'm recording this video in, and also the settings for the alert box here. Now I could just do a test follow. Now bear in mind for me, I've got custom themes installed on mine, so there should be some custom themes that appear through the CSS and the HTML and JavaScript that I've got and that I showed you earlier. Now we can do a simple test by clicking um, the test follow button here as an example. And there you go. This is pulled in my Synthwave CSS. Once again, we can taste, test something else, for instance, a raid. And again, for me, it's a different theme. So that's what appears on my... I mean, I wouldn't mind a, an 896 raid. That would be fun. <laughs> Final thing, uh, you may also, even though it's not a part of this particular video, you may also want to have a notification that appears in your chat as a text message in the chat that says uh, so-and-so has subscribed or followed or whatever. And that literally will mirror the activities that are taking place. It's just a better experience because there's a confirmation on the screen and also in the chat. That will also help you as the streamer to see the notifications better. I've done a separate video about chat alerts and I will also link that in the description below. One very quick note as well is another alternative to copying the browser source and pasting in as a browser source URL. If you're using Streamlabs OBS and bear in mind those alert boxes will work on OBS Studio and XSplit and other different streaming softwares. If you are specifically using Streamlabs OBS, you can click Add Source and instead just select the Alert Box widget. And all that does is pull in some of the settings. We'll just uh, have a look here, Add Source. It pulls in some of the settings. And this just allows you to make some of those changes that we made on the web browser within the software without having to go on the web browser. And this is the benefit of using Streamlabs OBS and also Streamlabs Online. They integrate very well together. It just gives you a little bit more flexibility to do it within the software. So there you have it, how you can easily set up Alert Box version 1 from Streamlabs Online into your Streamlabs OBS. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you have, give it a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe. If you've got any questions, give me a shout at twitch.tv forward slash machine Dana. Otherwise, have a wonderful day. Take care.